Hey, welcome to Friends You Can Grow With podcast. I am Matt Nespery. I'm Casey Placencia. And we are here with Billy Hunt. Hello. Yeah. Billy, it's so good to have you back on the podcast. Yeah. You've been a guest before. I have, and I had a good time. I hope we have a good time this time. <laughs> I, oh. I bet we will, because 100%. I hear today we're going to be talking about toxic emotions. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, we are. You subject. said okay like you didn't know that. It makes me nervous. <laughs> Do I have to know before we uh, talk? Boy, I hope so, because you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're talking about toxic emotions today, right? Where should we begin? Can we define the word emotions? Is that a good spot to start? Let's define toxic. toxic. Okay. Because yeah. most people don't. We'll talk about what an emotion is, but I looked up the word toxic. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I think of toxic, I think of those little skulls with the crossbones mm -hmm. that you see on mm -hmm. a bottle and yeah. you know yes. if I see a skull and a crossbone, yeah. don't drink it. For yeah. sure. Like Even poisonous. if it's an energy drink. Don't <laughs> drink it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it will do more than give you energy. It'll kill you. Yeah. So, yeah. so the word toxic, if you look it up, means poisonous, venomous, virulent. I probably did virulent. I didn't say that correctly. Uh, noxious, dangerous, destructive, harmful, unsafe, malignant, injurious, fatal, deadly, lethal. Wow. Yeah. None of those words sound good. No. 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 Yeah. And when we think about a drink or food, it's one thing, but we put that with the word emotion. Mm. Mm. And emotion defined is a natural, instinctive state of mind derived from one's circumstances, mood, our relationships with others. Hmm. So it's the way we feel, it's mm -hmm. our emotions. And, and sometimes our emotions are deadly. They're very, very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what can, can we think of some emotions that would be uh, toxic? Can you take a penny? Mm. Yeah. Pride. Um, pride. Like anger. Yeah. Uh, the anger, yeah. yeah. Offense, <clears throat> yeah. how about that one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can we back up for just a second because sure. I want to talk about toxic. I think that's a you great like that word. word. <laughs> I think that's a good, well because it had so many different words mm -hmm. um, that they used to define it, but all of them obviously pointed to the the sense that it's bad. Yeah, it's yeah. bad for you. Yeah. But even in the definition itself, you talked about how toxic can mean poisonous. You know, something you ingest mm -hmm. can be venomous, something that's, you know, in your bloodstream, yeah. like or something a, a that's, snake. you know, a snake would bite you and that yeah. would be totally. the venom. Yeah. yeah. So it would be coming from outside in. Yeah. yeah. Noxious being something you breathed in. So I think mm -hmm. the point I'm getting at is toxic seems to be something outside of your body that is right. not supposed to be there, yeah. that is taken in. Yeah. yeah. In a way that is oh, that's detrimental. Good. Yeah. To so your it's body. taking in some, and the, you know, some things you can't help taking in, but uh, if I were bitten by a, a spider or a snake, mm -hmm. I would immediately try to get to a hospital mm -hmm. to get something to get rid of that so yeah. that it, yeah. it would not hurt me. Yeah. And so uh, when we talk about toxic emotions, they're going to happen. Mm -hmm. We all have them. I, you know, you've probably never had a toxic never. emotion. Never. <laughs> well, and when I'm bitten by a spider, I just think I'm going to become Spider Man. So, <laughs> Toby Maguire, not that Tom one. Tom Holland, Probably Andrew Garfield. Him. I don't know that one. <laughs> anyway, so that emotion you, was I'm confusion. <laughs> yeah, that that was a confusion, especially yeah. for me. Yeah, <laughs> when you talk about things, yeah, but uh, yeah, but when we talk about emotions, there's something we all experience, mm -hmm. and and we do have negative feelings. We mm -hmm. don't really want them, but yeah. they come. Yeah, so we have to learn how to deal with them. And I have a scripture, I have to turn back here to get my scripture, because a lot of what happens to us, the toxic emotions are the result of conversations, mm. of saying the wrong thing. I know you never say the wrong thing, but I do, I, you know, especially with people you love. Mm. Yeah. You know, the people you love the most, you tend to say the most toxic Definitely. things to. And, and so I listen to this verse. This is in James 119 from the New King James. My beloved brethren, let everyone be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. So we need to listen more, speak less, yeah. and control our emotions. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, another on that verse, because I love that verse. It's one I've definitely tried to apply in my life because other translations say slow to anger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned yeah. anger being a, a toxic emotion. 
I think one thing that just kind of stuck out to me as you're reading that verse is it's um, it's kind of like when you hear of someone ingesting a poison, their body takes time to process it. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes a toxic emotion can be too rapid of a response to what you've heard. Yeah. And I love that he leads with be quick to listen. Yeah. As in quick to pick up on it, but slow to speak as if you're taking time to process mm -hmm. what you've heard. So you don't have that quick, um, almost counter strike reaction mm -hmm. to what you've heard. I think that two words that, that would uh, work there is react or respond. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I, I am quick to react sometimes when I don't need to react, I need to respond. Mm -hmm. Because responding does not, does not attack character. Mm -hmm. It attacks the problem. But yeah. reacting often is you always, you know, mm -hmm. why do you do that? And, and so those, you know, and of course, uh, toxic emotions come from others than your husband or your wife or your best friend. It can happen in an office. It can happen unintentionally. Mm -hmm. And it's not just anger, uh, getting offended. If somebody gets picked instead of you. Uh, if someone, uh, just all sorts of things can cause you to be offended. Mm -hmm. And all of those. In, one other thing about anger before we leave it, because there's a scripture in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, that says, be angry. So we're all going to get angry. There's nobody that's exempt from yeah. anger. We all feel the emotion of anger. Be angry, but do not sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Give no such opportunity to the devil. Mm -hmm. So the enemy of our soul takes great advantage of us when we embrace anger, when we do not handle it. And, and when the Bible says don't let the sun go down, you've got, sometimes you can't solve the problem, but you can begin to take steps not to let that anger become deeper mm -hmm. and become bitterness and uh, and become a divisive toxic emotion yeah. mm -hmm. so uh, you know that's art and i have practiced that for years and years as we don't go to bed angry yeah, yeah. sometimes we have to talk a really long you time stay up real late. We're not <laughs> yeah. Angry. yeah so what steps can you take for to not get super angry and to kind of work through that well, I think that with anger, there are times that you have to just step back mm -hmm. and, and be honest. Say, you know, can we talk about this later mm -hmm. or can we take a break because I because I'm, I'm getting angry and I don't want to be angry. Yeah. And when the, with people that are close to you, that's what you do. People that are not close to you that are just attacking you. You just need to step back and excuse yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you can't stop that. But you don't have to be. You don't have to put up with it, mm -hmm. and so, but but in, internally, it, then then you have to deal with what's internal, mm. and that has to do a couple things. Um, recently, something happened with a friend, and it was really a confusion of dates and times, and I was I was really frustrated about it, and I told my friend I was frustrated about it. That this, and my exact words, this does not make me happy. But when I left that person, I, I began to think about it. it. This was not, this this scheduling was not going to ruin my life. It was something that I needed to just, I needed to not be angry. This was mm -hmm. silly. The enemy was using this to try to drive a wedge between my friend and I. Yeah. And so I, and, and I didn't even ever talk about it except to apologize for saying that to my friend. But uh, I, I just handled it myself. Mm -hmm. I asked the Lord to forgive me. I asked him to cleanse my heart, and I ended up enjoying my time with my friend that I thought I was not going to enjoy mm -hmm. because of That's the scheduling. Good. So, you know, that those are things you have to, with your mate, you just have to decide, I love this person. Mm -hmm. They're not perfect, neither am I. So we need to talk through this, but we don't need to deposit things that, that will later put a wedge between us. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we've paused a little bit here on anger. Um, and we hit a couple of emotions right off on the bat. I know you said pride. Um, I have the, the sense that, and tell me how this sits with you, Billy. Does any emotion have the um, ability to become toxic in too great of a, I guess, concentration? Yes. You know, you see um, on those warning labels, call poison control if ingested this much. Yeah. Um, and, you know, certain chemicals are safe in certain doses. 
our emotions the same? Is there a healthy amount of anger? I mean, we saw Jesus get angry, right? Um, is there a healthy amount of fear? Is there a healthy amount of certain emotions before they become toxic? And what is that relationship? How do we find that balance? And uh, well, talk about anger and fear, the healthy amounts. Uh, anger, especially if, if it's directed toward the enemy or toward a situation that's unjust, can in, can inspire you to action to alleviate that. And mm -hmm. that's good. That's good. That's a good anger. And, and once you take the action, it releases the anger from your emotion. Mm -hmm. And it replaces it with faith and with energy. So that type of anger, that's good. And, uh, and, and fear, a lot of people do incredible things when fear strikes them. Mothers have been known to lift cars oh, off yeah. their children yeah. because, of, because of fear that their child was gonna be killed. Mm -hmm. And so, but, but those, those emotions that are not handled or that are not driving you to a better place that are just pushed down, the danger is that they can become bitterness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can build up inside you. Um, I have, let me list a few more and then we'll talk about that. I have listed here anger, offense, mm -hmm. when somebody just really hurts you. You know, people get offended and leave churches. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you get offended and you leave a church, you don't handle the offense, you leave the church. I promise you, you will meet the same offense in the next church. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, the way of life until you handle that thing. It'll keep coming back at you. It's the same with everything else. When you're, uh, when when you don't forgive, maybe a parent that mistreated you, people will mistreat you all your life. It's mm -hmm. because the enemy will keep bringing that back to you because it's working. Yeah. 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 Does so, that play into it all? You hear the term of victim mindset or a victim mentality. Do you think that has something to do with it? Of, I've been victimized in this way in the past, so it's easier for me to always be looking like I'm a victim in those mm. situations? I don't think we do it on purpose, mm -hmm. but I think it happens. Yeah. I think it happens. And I'm not a psychiatrist but or a psychologist, but I'm old. And so I've, I've watched a lot of life and yeah. I've ministered to a lot mm. of people mm -hmm. that I've seen this. The other things here are injured, you know, injured souls. Those things injure our soul. Mm -hmm. our, our invisible man or woman. Um, uh, feelings of inferiority. The, when you're mistreated, uh, people who go through divorce, many times after that divorce, they feel inferior. They feel that that failure, any kind of failure, has that feeling of inferiority that will come, and it's very destructive. It's very toxic in our life. Jealousy or envy, the difference in jealousy and envy. Jealousy is a type of fear. Mm. jealousy really is a fear that someone is going to take something from you that's mm. yours yeah. but envy is when i want something you have mm -hmm. i feel i you know I'm, I'm envious of you because i don't have what you have and it causes me to covet it mm -hmm. causes me to concentrate on uh, god doesn't love me as much as he loves you or or i'm just not as fortunate and all of those emotions build up build up now, i have known women and, and ministering to women over the years, but it happens to men too, who something really traumatic happened. Maybe they were raped. Uh, maybe they were terribly abused as a child. And they never, maybe they didn't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. And they held it inside them and it became a root of bitterness. Mm -hmm. The danger of a root of bitterness is that it's malignant. It's mm -hmm. like a cancer. Yeah. The older you get, the, the greater it gets, the bitterness, mm -hmm. and it comes out and, and eventually you become just a bitter person. Mm -hmm. It just destroys your joy, it destroys your peace. It's a horrible thing, so we have to handle toxic emotions. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that makes me think of, I just have started reading a book about, um, I mean, you know, do ministry mostly to kids and um, it's about ministering to kids who are experiencing trauma. And one of the statistics they mentioned right off the bat is 61% of all people will experience some form of trauma before they're 13, whether that mm. be something as extreme as what you said, abuse from a parent, or whether that be something as um, seemingly innocent as rejection, um, not being picked for a team or, or what have you. 61% of people will experience that before they're 13. And the majority of people will not know how to deal with that or how that continues to affect them as an adult. And I love that what you're saying is um, 
if we don't deal with that and if we let it in a way fester, it can cause almost like a malignant growth, what you're calling a root of bitterness in our life. Yeah, it's an emotional cancer. Yeah, so how do we monitor that? How do we keep a pulse on, in a way, acknowledging things that have happened to us, whether you know in the distant past or in the not too distant past, how do we acknowledge that but not um, lend credibility to it? Well, I think we do have to acknowledge it. I don't think we can always acknowledge it to the person who caused it. Mm -hmm. uh, most children, when you're talking about children, I, I think it's so sad. Divorce is so prevalent in our society. Mm -hmm. There are very few people you meet that haven't gone through divorce. It's just, and if they haven't gone through divorce, they've probably gone through separation sometime mm -hmm. in their marriage. But it, it, we don't realize how it affects children because mm -hmm. children tend to blame themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so sad because it's never the child's fault, but the child tends to blame themselves, and it, it affects their relationships as they mm -hmm. grow older. So if you're a parent and you're going through a divorce and something, and there are children involved, you need to communicate with those children that it's not their fault, that their mother and their father still love them, that they will always have a relationship with their mother and their father, and then... As a parent, you need to really be careful what you say and, and not, no matter what your mate has done to you, no matter how you feel, first you need to deal with those toxic thoughts because if you don't handle, uh, if, if it was unfaithfulness, if it was abuse, whatever divided that relationship, if you don't forgive and release and ask God to cleanse you from that, you'll, you'll, you may marry the same guy mm -hmm. in a different body. Mm -hmm. are the same girl yeah. in a different body because because if you're not healed you're not ready for god to bring you fulfillment in your life yeah. yeah and when it comes to dealing with those issues i feel like just in my experience of again dealing with people and even myself um you know there's really we tend to go one of two routes we either bury the issue and we don't deal with it at all kind of that head in the sand approach or we blow it up and we make it a much bigger deal. I've seen people who have gone through, you know, something that it, compared to others might be relatively small, but it has now become their entire identity because they've blown it up mm. into a much bigger issue. But I think what you're saying is that the way to deal with it is more in the middle of we're not getting just burying it, not just neglecting it. Neither are we making it a much bigger deal than it needs to be but we're recognizing that it happened and that it may even still continue to have an effect on our lives. And we have to own our own, we have to own the responsibility of our part. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm not saying that it's never just one person's fault, mm -hmm. but most of the time when separation comes, there had to be something that drew, drew you together to begin with, mm -hmm. and there has to be something that divides you. Mm -hmm. So somewhere between this coming together and this division, there began to be a problem that was not addressed mm -hmm. and that problem grew and and it uh you know i and again I'm not, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist but i've lived a long time and and counseled with a lot of people and it's very sad because uh, neither party is really happy when divorce happens mm -hmm. you may want the divorce you may realize you may think and realize there's nothing else you can do but it's still sad and it would have been wonderful if in the beginning you could have recognized the problem and talked about it. So now here you are. I didn't. Here's here's what's happened to me. So now what should I do? Mm -hmm. Well, you go before the Father. Yeah. And you say to the Father, Father, I have sinned. I don't really know what I did wrong. And, and I'm sorry for my part in this. And I ask you to please forgive me and help me forgive the person who hurt me. Mm -hmm. I release them to you. Yeah. And I ask you to forgive them. I release them. I ask you to release me and give me a clean start and with a clean heart and completely release me from these toxic emotions. Mm -hmm. And you know, God will do it. Yeah. He'll do it. Now, the enemy will try to bring it back and you'll have to stop and say, no, no, I've given that to God. Mm -hmm. I trust God with it. Mm -hmm. And now he's directing my, my steps.
Yeah. yeah. So it's not a one and done thing. No, no, no. And that doesn't mean you have to go back and marry somebody who was terrible or, or that you don't want to be married to anymore. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying you need to be free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You really need to be free. Yeah. Because if you don't, uh, you know, you can tell people who have this, this toxic thing, every time you are with them for an extended period, a couple of hours, they'll talk about that thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Over and over and over and over, they'll talk about it. Yeah. Till all their friends are sick of hearing about it. Yeah. But it's because they haven't been healed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and how, they need to be healed. How would you go about that with friends who do bring up something that's bothering them, that's toxic? How would you go about that if they're talking about it over and over again? First of all, you, you want to you want to do it with questions. Mm-hmm. You don't want to say, "I'm sick of hearing about yeah, that." Right. <laughs> that is yeah. not the way to approach yeah. the subject. Or then they'll yeah. have another toxic question. <laughs> yes. But uh, you with a question. You're mm-hmm. you know a question like, "Why do you uh, you talk about that a lot? Why do you talk about that so much?" Mm-hmm. And ask that question, and and then then be honest with them. Say, "Have you asked the Lord to heal you?" And could mm-hmm. I pray with you to ask the Lord to heal you? Yeah. I remember at a conference one time, a, a lady came up to me, had been married to a minister, and he had uh, left her for another uh, the piano player, as a matter of fact, in their church, mm-hmm. and, uh, and had left her and divorced her. And she said, you know, Billy, I don't want God to heal my marriage. I, I mean, I don't want him back. He's, he's gone. He's married someone else. I don't want him back. But she said, I can't get free. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to do. Can you tell me what to do? Well, I didn't know what to do. So I said, let's pray. And the Holy Spirit began to pray and help me pray for her. Hmm. And what I asked the Lord to do was release her from the covenant that she had not done anything. And whatever she had done, ask the Lord to forgive her, to forgive him. And the Lord sees the situation to please release her from the covenant of marriage. And we, and she we said amen, and she went along. So the prayer with a little more than that, but basically that was mm-hmm. what it was. Please release her and cleanse her and heal her. Mm-hmm. She went to lunch that afternoon at the, after the last session. She came back, and she said, I don't know how to tell you this. I don't feel like the same person. Hmm. Oh, wow. And later, some months later, I saw her, and she said, I, I can't believe that simple prayer set me totally free. Mm-hmm. That simple prayer, God did exactly what we asked her to do because mm-hmm. she had been, she was overwhelmed with guilt her background, her church background, told her that divorce was a sin, and yeah. it is a sin. But Jesus died for our sins. Mm-hmm. So when, we, when we're when we involved in something that puts us in a position like that, all we have to do is ask the Lord. And I really advise anybody I talk to that's gone through a divorce, especially if they're planning on marrying somebody else at this point, ask the Lord to release you mm-hmm. from that covenant because mm-hmm. marriage is a covenant, and yeah. it's not a covenant with men. It's a covenant with God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he will. He will release you. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, what is the relationship? You talked about um, injured souls being a a toxic relationship or a toxic emotion that we can experience. What is the relationship between our emotions and our soul, our spiritual self? Our Well, our emotions, our emotions are our mind, our emotion, uh, you know, mainly our intellect. Those mm-hmm. are the things that are injured and that we carry. We carry a, in our mind really more than any. The battlefield is in our mind. When we're injured, when things happen to us, it just keeps playing over and over. Have you ever had that happen to you? It gets bigger when you go to bed. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. you think, if I should have said, I wish I'd yes. said. Mm-hmm. It's yes. going to, you know, I, this is our, you're even a financial problem. It gets bigger when yeah. you go to bed. And uh, But your spirit man <clears throat> is that imp- in, invisible part of you that beautiful, invisible part of you where the Holy Spirit dwells. Mm -hmm. And so what you don't want to do is let your mind block your spirit. And that's what happens with toxic emotions. Mm -hmm. Those toxic emotions push down on the Spirit of God and don't really allow the Spirit of God to minister to you Mm -hmm. as he would love to minister to you. So that's why so much of the Bible, especially the New Testament, talks about controlling our old nature controlling our flesh, controlling our mind. Spiritual warfare is all about your thought life, pulling down those thoughts and practicing. And I don't know about you, but Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is a, something that I rehearse constantly. Mm-hmm. Lord, I, I choose to trust you. Mm-hmm. I put my trust in you. I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. Yeah. And help me acknowledge you in everything I do so you can direct my path. Yeah. And that keeps that. I really, almost every day, I ask the Lord to search me. 
Mm-hmm. Search my heart. David prayed this prayer. Mm-hmm. Search my heart, oh God. Yes. See if there's anything in me, anything that makes you sad. If I, Am I holding anything? And is there an area that I'm not walking in forgiveness? Is there an area, maybe we want to close this section. I don't know how long we've been talking. Three hours, I don't know. <laughs> but listen to Hebrews 12, 14, and 15. Strive to live in peace with everybody and pers- and pursue consecration and holiness without which you'll, you will never see the Lord. Exercise foresight and be on the watch to look after one another, to see that no one falls back or fails to secure God's grace, his unmerited favor and spiritual blessing, in order that no root of bitterness, no root of, it says here, rancor, bitterness, or hatred, shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment. And many become contaminated and defiled by it. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we need to look after one another. Yeah. And when we see one of our friends going through something that could cause them to become bitter, we need to come alongside and encourage them and help them release it, get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Because there's, you know, there's, you can't change the past. Mm-hmm. You cannot change the past, but you certainly can change the future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you certainly can control your future. So you have to keep your focus. I don't know how often the Lord has said to me in my life, probably millions of times, hold your mind in place. Mm. don't let don't let your mind wander keep your focus Mm. on the will of god on the word of god Mm -hmm. and and i'll keep you in peace yeah Yeah. so to me the question has to be asked if emotions seem to be this thing that we are constantly having to rein in check um you know harness or or whatever what's the point of them why why did god give me an emotions that's a good question you want to answer it yeah (laughs) okay no, you want to answer. <laughs> yeah. That's, you're the expert. Uh, you know, if we had no, what if God had given us no emotions? Mm. So we just sit here and stare at each other and talk, blond, you know, blandly. We wouldn't laugh. Yeah. We wouldn't talk. Mm-hmm. Because those are emotions. Yeah. Those are all mm. emotions. So he gave us an emotional self for joy, for peace. You know, mm-hmm. there, if you read in Ecclesiastes, there's nothing better than to spend a day with your family with a good meal and, and just have a really, God wants us to have a good time. So he gave mm-hmm. us emotions. Yeah. But he also wants us to obey him. He also wants us to walk in peace and joy and not, not let our emotions control us mm-hmm. because of, although they're good, they can also be bad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I work with kids, as I've said way too many times in this episode. Um, And the way I explain it to kids is um, emotions are kind of like seasoning. You know, when you're cooking, all of us at this table are phenomenal cooks. Absolutely. Um, But none of us would like a meal that's all oregano or all salt or pepper, right? Just like we wouldn't want a life that's all anger or Mm -hmm. all fear or all envy, but every meal is made better with seasoning. I salt and pepper my eggs or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's almost like um, C.S. Lewis talks about one of his books, how God gives us this range of emotions because um, the heights of joy are best experienced when contrasts with the depths of sorrow. Mm-hmm. And it almost gives us this broad view of, I am so excited and I'm so happy when I see, you know, my child born or or a new life enter this world. And that's made even greater when I hold that in contrast with the the knowledge that I've lost loved ones. And I know life is precious and I know it's finite. Um, And I don't explain all that to kids. But what I say is, you know, emotions are great because they're there to season our life, but they're not to be the main thing we experience. Mm -hmm. We're uh, we're to walk in the spirit we're commanded to walk in the spirit Mm -hmm. and so we have to learn the difference between our emotional life and our spiritual life and and if we you know i love the song andre crouch you probably don't even know who he is andre crouch is a was a vocalist when i was young Mm -hmm. and uh, he wrote a a song called through it all Mm -hmm. and uh, and one of the lines in that song is if i'd never had a problem i'd never know that god could solve them Mm -hmm. i'd never know what faith in god could do so through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus, and I've learned to trust in God. Mm-hmm. And I really think that when we think about all of the negative emotions, there are also positive emotions. But every negative thing I have gone through has taught me a couple of things. It's taught me personally 
how to grow spiritually. I've become stronger spiritually in every one of those trials. But it's also taught me how to minister to people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If I had not, if I had never battled cancer in my body, I would not have had compassion for people with cancer. Because mm-hmm. quite frankly, before that, when people would come to me for healing, I would pray for them to be healed. And if they didn't, if if they didn't uh, exercise in faith, I got real irritated with them. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I thought, what is wrong with you? Just believe God. And then I found out when I went through cancer that faith in, for healing is a process, mm-hmm. and your body responds to that process and yes god will heal you but then i became patient because i knew that the lord taught me something through that Mm -hmm. god didn't bring it certainly not it was the devil trying to kill me but i learned from it Mm -hmm. and the toxic things that happen to you don't beat yourself up over them use them as learning experiences the the hard knocks of life the college Mm -hmm. of life and let the holy spirit teach you how to overcome and teach you how to become strong so you can help other people. Mm -hmm. And so you won't make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Casey, I have a question for you. You are our token young person. Mm -hmm. Um, So our token expert on all things up and coming. I feel like there's a trend of people who almost self-identify themselves as the emotion they're experiencing or even taking it to the extreme of... um, and again, this is a, a clinical term, but I, well, I'm just depressed all the time or, yeah. or I, I'm just an anxious person. Do you see that more in the circle of your age group at all? Definitely. Um, I've had a lot of friends who have battled with like depression or other mental <clears throat> illnesses. Um, and yeah, I definitely see a trend in my age, but also people younger than me. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's starting to get worse and yeah. worse throughout the generations that are coming. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, this is a very, again, clinical subject because depression is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Mental illnesses are a real thing. Um, but I feel like there's almost this trend that we're seeing of people jumping to extremes immediately mm. of... I'm sad, so I have depression all the time. Yeah. Or I experienced hurt today, so I'm going to hurt myself mm-hmm. today. Um, Billy, what what do you have in your knowledge? What has stopped older generations from doing that? We didn't have multimedia. That's really, mm-hmm. uh, it really. I think, and I'm not opposed to multimedia. I, you know, I think it's wonderful. I, I mean, think I think that God uh, gave, gave us all these things to spread the gospel, mm-hmm. but we've turned them, and, and it's okay to turn them for entertainment, but I think this is what it does. Uh, there, are, there are some young people that I have been connected to and, and walked through some things with. They tend to, um, everything is about them. It's on mm-hmm. multimedia. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's what I've posted. It's what's been posted about me. It's what I've said. It's what people have said about me. It's all about me. Mm-hmm. Well, we're not built to be all about me. Mm-hmm. God didn't create us to be all about me. Notice the, the line uh, when the first line I read in that Hebrews 12 was strive to be at peace with everybody, mm-hmm. not just yourself, yeah. but with everybody. Don't live just to satisfy yourself. Live to minister to people around you. The more you give the happier you are. Mm-hmm. That's all through the Bible. Mm-hmm. And and it's true. The more you give out, if you just concentrate on what makes me happy, you're never going to be happy mm-hmm. because you cannot fill up that cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever you think will make you happy, at some time, it's going to reach a place where it no longer makes you happy. You need more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need oh, more. Yeah. And I think multimedia has done that to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you say multimedia... Do you mean social media? <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's what okay. I mean. <laughs> multimedia was VHS. Please correct. I think we, I think we all, we all knew that. Yeah. I just wanted to have a quick chuckle. Yeah. Um, he just but wanted I, to make me look old. <laughs> well, wise. Right? Um, no, but I think part of it also goes to we are living in a time where I think in a desire to simplify things, we reach for extremes. And we're not okay with trying to define gray areas. So if I say, I'm having a tough day, I'm a little bit stressed, 
someone's going to say, well, what's stressing you out? But if I say, I have anxiety right now, someone's going to say, you need a moment. You take, And I think that maybe there's a tendency to reach towards these really extreme terms in order to, in our minds, maybe simplify what we're feeling. But in a way, when we do that, we latch onto those things mm-hmm. and really exacerbate the problem yeah. we're having. Yeah. I think also, um, I think we've lost the art of communication. Huh. We've lost the art of fellowship. Not so much in people uh, that are in church, because one of the th- things that church does is help us with our fellowship, help us with our communication with one another. But uh, the social media and and the multimedia, you know, we're so busy with what we're doing. We're all so busy mm-hmm. that uh, we don't have time for one another. And we really need to, the older you get, the more you, you realize it's important how much time you spend with people, especially people you love. Mm-hmm. We actually, and uh, maybe you all do too, we actually schedule specific time with our daughter and our grandson. Hmm. I don't want him to forget who I am just because by the time he's 25, I'll be in heaven. But I, I want him to remember. And so we have a specific time, and I don't let anything rob me of that time mm-hmm. with my grandson and my daughter and her husband of course we, we include him too but, <laughs> <laughs> but i think that we don't we don't have enough time where we really and where we lay everything else aside going to restaurants we used to go to restaurants to have fellowship and communicate but now if you look around restaurants especially with young people they've all got their phones out you know and, mm-hmm. and they're communicating okay but not with the people with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, who are you communicating with? Mm-hmm. So I, I think that we we need to uh, adjust a little bit. Mm-hmm. We need to adjust because mm-hmm. we need each other. Yeah. We need real human contact. Yeah. Real human contact, even yeah. though it's painful sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> man, something came to mind. Oh, I think with that. And you can talk more to this because I think it's right on line with what you were saying. Intentionality is big. I think that um, we need to make sure we're more intentional, not just when we're spending time with people, but who we're spending time with. But Mm -hmm. also emotions are hard and you kind of have to dig through them sometimes. Mm -hmm. You have to be intentional and sit down and sort through things, you know, and I think whether it's social media, multimedia, whatever it is, we have so many opportunities and ways to escape nowadays that make it easier for us to escape than to deal with the emotional situations we're having right now. You know, um, religion used to be called the opium of the, the people. Now we're facing an opiate crisis because people want to withdraw with actual opiates. Mm-hmm. And I think that part of that is we've lost the art and the ability to sit down with our emotions and actually muddle through them and get to the root. And can you help us figure out, one, what's a great way to do that or some best practices? And two, I think another way to learn when an emotion has crossed the line into toxicity. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. it does. I, uh, and as you were talking, I was thinking about that, that uh, during the pandemic, hmm. we had we we were isolated of necessity. Yeah. And that exacerbated the problem because the problem already existed, that we were really becoming so focused that we were not spending time with one another. And then we were isolated. And and really, there's been suicide epidemic and there's been depression epidemic because aloneness is a very negative thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a, it, it really is bad. So you have to intentionally, intentionally get together with somebody. And church is a wonderful place. If you don't have anybody to get together with, we've got lots of places here where you can hook in. Mm-hmm. You can watch us on yeah. YouTube. We love for you to watch us on YouTube, but we'd rather you come 
and bring your children to children's church mm-hmm. and let them communicate with other children and, and bring your young people to our young people's groups and let them communicate. And if you're older, we have older groups. So you can actually make friends and you can begin to grow spiritually and have fellowship. Then, uh, you know, one of the things that I look forward to every year, every year for the last, oh, probably 15 years, there are, uh, I think it started with 10 or 15 of us, but we're really getting old. I get together every year with a group of of ladies Mm -hmm. that I went to school with Hmm. from the first grade, uh, some of us all the way through college together. And so we've known each other almost all of our lives. We don't see each other all during the year because we live all over, all, some in Hawaii, some in you know, different states. But we come together, we rent a beach house, and we spend a weekend together. Mm-hmm. And during that weekend, we don't have any phones. We put our phones away. We don't turn the television on. We don't even put music on. We talk. We play games, board games. We eat. We have a wonderful time. We walk on the beach. Things that we don't normally do because when we're at home, we're so busy. Mm-hmm. And so, I, you know, I think you have to intentionally think about those things. Mm-hmm. Do I have a group of people that I love that I want to spend time with that we can intentionally put aside time and put everything else aside and do things, play dominoes, do something that makes you laugh. Mm-hmm. And we do laugh a lot after we've shared the pictures of all our grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that, that would be, does that sort of answer your question? Yeah, I think... In in a way, community is definitely healing for mm. toxic emotions. Um, and I know we've covered a lot of ground in this conversation, um, but I think it's been very helpful for me to understand, you know, that any any negative emotion in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing, mm-hmm. no. and any amount of anger isn't necessarily toxic. Yeah. It's when you let it sit. Mm-hmm. It's when you let it fester. It's when you let it stay for too long or build up yeah. that it can become toxic. Um, and that's been very helpful for me. Yeah, definitely. It's given me a new viewpoint on how toxic, toxic emotions affect us and how we can approach it and fix it for ourselves. Yeah, maybe in our next uh, little talk, we'll talk about spiritually how, how we can overcome mm-hmm. it the, how we can handle the hard work of forgiveness mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah i think that's great i think before we end we should all just pick an emotion that we have felt during this meeting and i have felt just calm yeah, <laughs> yeah just calm billy I, I have really felt joy. I always uh, feel joy when yeah. I get together yeah. with because I love the two of you. So it's, <laughs> all, it's always fun to come and talk and laugh and have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the, the look you gave me. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I don't know, a new viewpoint. I joy. Don't think that's an emotion. I, I'm sorry. I don't know. My joy. new emotion is disappointment. I like. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, are you disappointed because we have a different emotion? <laughs> oh, joy, man, joy. There's been a lot of laughter, yeah. a lot of learning, yeah. and that's why I love just sitting around this table with you guys. There's so much wisdom at this table, so much perspective, um, and I hope that this conversation was helpful to those of you listening. And I hope that you will continue to listen to friends you can grow with as we um, maybe dive into this subject a little more going forward.